All right, well, welcome everybody to the opening night party at the Ashland Independent Film Festival. Make some noise! Woo! Woo! A wonderful evening. Yes, for all of the applause. Yes, I love it. I'm not by myself this evening, as you've seen, or you heard, or you read. I'm a part of a, it's the two of us. So I'm a co-host with my fabulous, amazing friend, and a fundraiser, Miss Julie Gillis. She's going to tell you about the night. Julie, where are you? Hey, what's going on? Come on, Julie. Hi. I'm so happy to be here. So happy to be with all of you. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us in this wild experiment. It has been um, a beautiful silver lining in the strength of the last four months. We're going to have a party no matter what. We're gonna have a festival, no matter what. So we're gonna have night. We're gonna dance. We're gonna listen to music. Hear about films. Have some wine or your favorite beverage. And what else are we gonna do, Camila? Oh, we're gonna dance. Um, <laughs> uh, we're gonna dance. We're gonna meet some directors. We're gonna um, have some breakout sessions and rooms. We're gonna um, find out some new information about some of the films that you're gonna be seeing. Uh, so we're going to do a lot of things tonight. It's going to be a good time. Excellent. And uh, you know, when you are on this journey with us, you're on this journey with us. There may be a technical moment. We're all just going to go with it and enjoy it and, uh, and have a good time. Get real with each other. So let's see. What is, what's coming up next, Camila? You can see the guy, right, that's uh, standing in the background. Right, and we'll hear more from them later. You see a guy with this guitar. I mean, he's just got this amazing guitar and he has this, you see this beautiful woman standing next to him. Uh, so we're gonna have some music from uh, Jeff and Inger uh, in a moment. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and have an introduction. I don't really have to introduce them. I think everybody already knows them. Wanna make sure I get, you know, I have a Southern accent. So sometimes I have to pronounce my words in a different way. So I wanna make sure I say, your artist, their artistic director and executive director of AIFF, Richard Herskowitz. It, turning it over hey. to you. Hey, thank you, Camilla and Julie. Um, so uh, it's just, this has been the most incredible year. Uh, many of you may know we opened an AIFF film center on Ashland's Main Street earlier this year. And that was supposed to be the hub of this year's festival in April. Uh, then of course we had to close the film center and postpone the festival itself uh, because of this damn virus. Um, and then this opportunity materialized to reinvent our festival as a virtual festival on film festival flicks and we grabbed it. Uh, my team of about 30 screeners and programmers had previewed about a thousand film submissions and we notified about a hundred filmmakers that they were accepted in the festival. So it, it felt tragic to let this all uh, disappear. So I'm truly grateful for the many filmmakers who followed us online and that many of them are here tonight. Um, also, all the filmmakers uh, taped Q and A's with us and incredibly every single program in this festival has a question and answer session at the end, uh, often with special guests so please stick around after you see each film and watch those. So about 30 of the filmmakers in the festival program are here tonight uh, at the party. They're going to speak uh, in the course of the night about one minute each, introducing their films and themselves in between the musical se segments. Um, but I just want to first introduce one of those uh, filmmakers, a special guest, uh, the director of our opening day feature film. Uh, this filmmaker received the Lifetime Achievement Award from AIFF in 2014, and she's received about a hundred other honors. Um, her film Desert One, about the 1979 American hostage situation in Iran, plays until midnight tonight, and I strongly encourage you to go check it out right after this party if you haven't seen it yet. So, uh, Nick, can you take us to Barbara Koppel? Hello. Hey. Hi. <laughs> Yay! Woo! Hi, Barbara. Yes, for all of you, thank you. And Richard and everybody, I think you've just done a marvelous job on putting this together through a very trying time and giving us all something to smile about, to remember that we still have community and we still have total 
love and respect for each other and each other's films. And I can't thank you enough for doing it. And I only hope that next year we're all going to be together to celebrate face to face. Uh, thank you for having Desert One. Desert One was a film that I love doing. It's very different from all my other films because it includes big, tough military guys who don't want to let their feelings out, but they do. And uh, they were, the Iranian students took over the American embassy and held 52 Americans captive for 444 days. It was the whole beginning of Ted Koppel's Nightline. Carter lost to Reagan because of a mission that failed. And you see these big burly guys breaking out in tears. It took me forever to get um, an interview with Jimmy Carter, but it was worth every minute. It was three months. And finally they gave me 19 minutes and 47 seconds to film him, but almost everything he said is in it. And it was truly beautiful. So I just thank you from the bottom of my heart for having our film here and being the first film to show at Ashland this year and for all your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. All right. Thank you, Barbara, so much. Um, and now I just want to give everyone a taste of what's in store for the next 24 days. Uh, so Nick, let's run the festival trailer. This was edited by the great uh, Ashland-based editor, Jason Weinkoop. Jason edited the eight different bumpers that you'll see running before each of our programs. So let's run the trailer. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, I think we're about ready to hear some amazing music. Um, the incredible new music of <coughs> Jeff Pivar and Inger Nova Jorgensen. They're going to be playing. They're going to introduce themselves a little bit after the set, but we're going to kick it off with, you know, a couple of songs here. So Jeff and Inger, are you ready? Of course. We're ready. Well, we just want to let you know we're so honored to be here. Um, and we have some dancing material, but we're going to start off with an original tune called Back to Me, and Inger and I wrote this together. All the colors, they are fading, slowly shifting. making two
take a little bit of time and um, introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about what you've been doing here in the Valley. Of course, of course, we'd love to do that. So my name is Jeff Pivar and I moved to the Rogue Valley about 16 years ago. I was touring with David Crosby from Crosby, Stills and Nash, played at the Brit. Some mutual friends introduced me to Inger and well, I just fell madly in love. I came Aww. back to visit her five days later and i've been here 16 years oh wow, <laughs> wow. So I've, I've had the wonderful opportunity to tour with a lot of fantastic musicians uh, ray charles joe cocker bet midler um uh, countless others but uh i just love living here at the rogue valley and inger and i've become uh songwriters together and not only uh, are we busy doing our own concerts but inger is an incredibly accomplished artist and why don't you tell the folks. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Um, yeah, I, I am a painter and a sculptor. Um, I do bronze sculpture and um, oil painting, and uh, I have a brand new studio um, that I just opened actually on our property. Jeff and I uh, live in southern Ashland, and we do a house concert series here at a place called the Stone House, if any mm -hmm. of you have been out here. Yay. And uh, we, we are pretty much uh, full every single month that we play here at the Stone House. It's really a, an honor um, to serve the community that way. And in fact, on uh, May 31st, which is this upcoming Sunday, we are going to host a, another live stream concert, the two of us here at the Stone House, um, for everybody that wants to come. So you're all invited on Facebook and YouTube. And it's been just an honor to be involved uh, with Ashland Film Festival. I've actually scored a few films, and there's one that's showing this year that is uh, featuring a piece of my music, uh, a film that Joanne Feinberg uh, submitted on uh, Joan Thorndike's work in the Valley as a florist, I believe. Uh, is she here tonight? I don't know. Oh, yeah, she's coming. Oh, good, good. Well, we'll we won't say any more. <laughs> Let anyway, her tell it. <laughs> thank you for having us, and let's party. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, and we have a new EP, so don't forget that. Oh, we won't forget it. And you make sure you tell us how we can get it, too, before okay. we leave the okay. evening. All right. <laughs> also, we want to, um, before we get into our um, next set of, 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 we, of the evening, we have some uh, filmmakers that you're about to meet. And I want to go ahead and give some thanks to some of our sponsors out there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, Ashlyn uh, Home Net. Coming Attractions Theaters, Project A, thank you so much for your sponsorship. We are gonna throw this over to Richard, who is gonna tell us about some of the filmmakers. We've got uh, four little blocks of filmmaker introductions, uh, so you can kind of get a good feel for what you're gonna wind up seeing over the next uh, few days and, and give them the chance to say hello to you, just like they would if we were at a party together in physical time. So Richard, over to you. Okay. Okay, thanks, Julia. I'm actually just going to introduce this uh, set of, I think, nine filmmakers. Each of them is going to just uh, introduce themselves to you, say something about a minute about their film in the program. And we have a mix. Uh, the first uh, group of them are going to be 
feature filmmakers um, that is there, part of the series of um, one feature a day, a feature of the day. Uh, and they are Aaron Harper, who made My Wild Heart, then Hisani Johnson. Uh, I had an incredible Q&A with him about his film, Take Out Girl. And we'll end uh, then with Tom Kalen. Tom Kalen, who uh, is one of our four awardees this weekend. And every weekend we devote to these awardees. I think Tom is the second weekend, May 30th and 31st. Uh, he won our Pride Award this year. Uh, then we're gonna go on to three filmmakers, three of uh, filmmakers in our shorts program. As many of you probably know, the shorts programs run continuously throughout the festival. You can watch them anytime once you're a member or subscriber, uh, while the feature films only play within it for a 24 hour period. Anyway, those short filmmakers are Tessa Slovis, Melissa McClung, and Joni Koss. Uh, and then we'll end with um, two uh, local filmmakers in the local programs and the local film programs are available to everybody whether you're a subscriber or not on our film festival flicks homepage that's Richard Jensen and Deanna Morse and then we're going to end with a very surprised guest I'm not going to say anything about him um, I'm very excited but let's start now with uh, Aaron Harper I'll turn it over to you Nick there you go Aaron okay all right I'm unmuted yay hi everybody Hello. Thank you, Ashland Independent Film Festival, for um, hosting this incredible virtual online festival. Thank you for having My Wild Heart. We are thrilled and honored to be here. So I am Erin Harper. I'm the director, and I am representing My Wild Heart, along with co-director and producer Lily Vakili. Um, our film is a documentary. It's being screened on June 10th, so please join us. This is a film about the resiliency of love, art, and poetry seen through a 60-year marriage between a Midwestern librarian and an Iranian artist and scientist. It's about the complexity and the richness of family life as much as the mysteries and the connection between two lovers. I feel like this is a very hopeful film as well as heartbreaking and a welcome story during these difficult times that we are living in. So please join us and enjoy the beauty that My Wild Heart has to offer. And we'll see you all at the festival. Thank you so much for having us. <laughs> Good to see you guys. Um, I am Hisani Johnson. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, uh, Ashlyn Film Festival for the opportunity. I am the um, writer, co-writer and director of a feature film entitled Take Out Girl. And uh, it is the story of an Asian American young lady, 20 years old, who, whose family business is failing and she parlays her food delivery skills into a booming or profitable drug hustle in order to save her restaurant and move her family into a better life. So uh, we screen on June 2nd, I believe. And uh, we here in Las Vegas, just the whole team can't wait for you guys to check it out. Oh, great. Thank you, Hassani. Greetings from the, the Northern Catskills of New York where I have very slow internet, so I'm probably either fuzzy or out of sync, um, which is how I live much, much of my life, is fuzzy and out of sync um, in the new era. I'm Tom Kalen. I'm um, pleased to be here. I am the proud recipient of the Pride Award this year. Um, and I wanna thank Richard and the Ashland Independent Film Festival team for their incredible work organizing this event and bringing us all together. Um, I'm really thrilled next weekend. I actually, for the first time in my career, have a weekend named after me. So uh, May 30th and 31st is Tom Kalen Weekend, um, where you can see my first feature film, Swoon. Um, Swoon was made in 1992. It's part of the so-called New Queer Cinema. It tells the true story of uh, Nathan Leopold and Richard Loeb who were two 18, 19 year old boys who famously committed a murder in 1924. Um, I encourage you to see it. It looks at a real, a true crime and looks at the sort of um, political and social implications of that crime. Um, I'm also thrilled to share a program on my short work, um, much of which is politically activist work um, and spans from 1989 until 2019. So a 30 year, collection of short films uh, brought together. Um, yeah, much of the work I've made has been um, based on trying to build community, to use film and storytelling as a way to connect us um, individually and as individuals to form a larger movement, um, something at this time we need so much. 
Um, so I'm really thrilled and honored to be a part of this mix. Um, it's one of the really special treats of this film festival, I have to say, as being uh, maybe on the older spectrum, I'm almost 60, um, is to mix with all these um, filmmakers at different stages of, the, of work. So it's so thrilling to have people at the festival with their very first films, their very first short film, as well as seasoned filmmakers like Barbara. Um, I'll close with the funny anecdote, which is that Barbara Koppel will absolutely not remember. But in 1987, <laughs> I interviewed to be her intern. Um, I didn't end up working as an intern for her. I worked for another documentary company called AIDS Films, but I still remember trying to breathe during my Barbara Koppel interview <laughs> because I was in the presence of a legend. Um, so that was a kind of amazing experience and an honor to see her here tonight. Um, I so admire her body of work um, and I so admire Richard and the team at Ashland for doing this, to br for bringing this all together um, and for honoring all this beautiful filmmaking work. So thank you. Uh, it's thank it's you. almost 10.30 here in New York and I'm thrilled to be here with you. Um, so thanks so much for this this wonderful opportunity. Aww, I'm really thank honored. Thank you, Tom. You hey, had to make Tom. a girl hey. smile. Here's okay. Tessa. Tessa? Okay, hi, my name is Tessa Slovis. I am so happy to be here. I'm a first time filmmaker and I can't figure out Zoom backgrounds after three <laughs> months of, of this. Um, but I am the writer, director and producer of the short narrative film, Pizza Party. Um, Pizza Party is inspired by the Larry Nasser trials and it is the story of a group of women who meet at a pizza party, which we later learn is uh, for a pretrial gathering for sexual assault survivors. As the story unravels, we open this beautiful, crazy, mythical portal into a fantasy world where these women see themselves as their younger selves. Um, I think for me as a filmmaker, um, I am very passionate about representing dynamic, messy, complex women who don't always fit into the mold of being likable or well-behaved. So you get a lot of that with this film. And I really hope that you guys enjoy uncovering the mysteries of it. And ultimately, I think no matter what, it really is a story of courage in the face of adversity, which I think all of us can connect with right now. And just a kind of special shout out um, in the last three weeks under the distraction and mask of the coronavirus, Betsy DeVos made several amendments to Title IX, which now make it much harder for women to advocate for themselves when they face sexual violence within uh, a school setting or within extracurriculars outside of school. So this film feels for me, even a year after making it particularly resonant because um, that Title IX is directly related to the Larry Nasser trials. So I just wanted to speak to that. Thank you. Thank you, Tessa. Here's Melissa. Hi, I'm Melissa McClung. I'm in Western Massachusetts. And um, I am the director of Louis Antiques. And this right here is Louis. And he's quite a guy. I wandered into his antique shop and um, just thought he was a great character. So I did a little character portrait of him and it's under the shorts program, American Portraits, very aptly named. And uh, I think you'll really enjoy getting to know Louis. He's quite a guy and he uh, communes with his objects in his shop and has quite a relationship with them. So it's a really fun little film and um, I hope you enjoy it. And thank you so much to Richard and to Ashlyn for having me. And it's just so much fun to kind of drop into this community vibe um, out from across the country. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you Melissa. Here's Joni. Uh, I directed um, the short uh, Gather in a Corner. Uh, you can catch it in the short stories uh, block two. And uh, Ashland is actually our premiere, so um, we're super excited about that. Uh, the whole team is super pleased, and thank you uh, for the, the opportunity. Uh, our film is a speculative mockumentary about a gun instructor running a new safety drill in the seventh graders class that entails having a gun in the classroom. Um, we went with a mockumentary style because we wanted to show a balanced perspective, so there's a little bit of dark comedy in there. Uh, while also raising some important questions. 
Um, so I hope uh, you'll watch it and um, please reach out to me about the film. Uh, I'd love to hear what you think. Um, and uh, on the behalf of the whole team that worked on the short, uh, thank you very much uh, for giving us our premiere. Thanks. Thank you. Good. Here's Richard. Jensen, I am the writer director of the short, near the end, but not quite there. I'm sorry, I don't have a Zoom background, so this is the best I can do. Uh, it's basically about a young couple facing the new millennium and the challenges therein. It's kind of a dark comedy. Uh, my, I'm a kind of one-man uh, production company. I write, direct, produce, edit, do sound mixing on all my own shorts. Uh, I have a website, Celtic Ray Filmworks. Feel free to check that out at some time. And it also has samples of my previous work. Uh, I don't have much else to say, except I'm glad I'm in the festival this year. And I look forward to seeing all of your other films. They look great. Hi, I'm Deanna Morris. I'm an experimental animator. I recently moved to Oregon from Michigan. And in my film, The Gift, I used a variety of mixed techniques, drawn animation, some children's art. I animated eggs, Play-Doh, flowers. Um, in terms of my history, I have films for adults, including in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and I've made films for children on Sesame Street. But this film is a multi-generational reading of uh, to a certain cantatrice in celebration of Walt Whitman's 200th birthday um, last year. And the message of the film is that the basic needs belong to everyone, which I define as food, nature, creative expression, and of course, art. It's in the Locals program. I'm thrilled to be in this festival and looking forward to seeing all the work this year. And I hear after me, you have a special guest, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Deanna. Very exciting. I think our special guest is in the wings. Hello. Oh my Hello. God. Oh my it's God. Jonathan Spielberg. Hello, oh my God. Richard, nice to see you. Nice to see you, Richard. It's a long time. You might not recognize me. I, I've shaved my beard, you know, with quarantine. Uh, but, uh, you, you know, the hat and the coat, I, I hope you recognize me. Anyway, um, th thanks for having me, everybody. It's a, it's a real treat. Um, I'm excited to be here. Uh, I tell you what, you know, I, I just, I'm so excited. You know, I just love filmmaking. And the thing I love about filmmaking is really, you know, the stories, a really good story. And, uh, you know, so I have one for you this year that I'm, I'm gonna submit to the Ashland Film Festival. Um, I, I hope you'll let me know what you think of it, Richard. Um, it's called P.E. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, uh, now I don't wanna give it away. I don't wanna give it away just yet, but you know, but it's, it's a bit of a sci-fi. Okay, and it involves a lonely little boy named Elliot. Tell me if you've heard this before. <laughs> who befriends a um, a, a very lost PE coach, mm -hmm. and uh, this PE mm -hmm. coach needs to find his way home. You know, so uh, the, the boy uh, is in for an adventure with this PE coach trying to find his way home. But here's the moral: you know, Elliot finds home too. So anyway, uh, I, I, hope, I hope everyone enjoys it. I hope everyone enjoys the adventure and the story. And I, I hope you just love it. Uh, I'm not going to say any more. Anyway, thanks for having me, Richard. Oh, wow. <laughs> we can't wait to show your film. Wow. Uh, wow. Thank you, Richard. Um, thank you so much. I think we're going to get back to uh, Jeff and Inger. But um, Camila, would you tell everybody who to watch for when Jeff and Inger are playing? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit. We've got, a, we've got a real groove coming up, a real jam, original by Jeff and Inger. And we also have a special guest again, who is uh, a little mix of Patrick Swayze with a uh, little bit of Beyonce and a little bit of everybody in the groove. So make sure you look for that groove in person, our, our dancing guru uh, for this one as you uh, watch and listen to the music. All right, Jeff and Inga, we're ready for you. Hey. Woo. Come on, dance with us, everybody. Oh, everybody go in. Day with a million flower beds. 
Somebody's getting down. Put your foot on the rock and pat your foot, don't stop. Put your foot on the rock. Put your foot on the rock and pat your foot, don't stop. Put your foot on the rock. Put your foot on the rock and pat your foot, don't stop. Put your foot on the rock. Put your foot on the rock and pat your foot, don't stop. Put your foot on the rock. We got the you. So we'll come back and have him soloing like crazy later. So oh, you know what, Anger, he's so good. We could, you guys are so great. We didn't know we would. We we thank you so much. You guys are doing amazing. Thank, thank you, you so much for bringing the groove. Did you see people out of their seats just having a good time? Uh, so I'm a little out of breath, everybody. You know that means I'm out of shape. That's that COVID. <laughs> <laughs> the COVID body. I <laughs> uh, need to get out more. So Maybe thank you all. That's part of it. I know, right? And you, um, uh, Julie, do you want to tell them a little bit about the breakout session that we have coming? Up? Yes, yes. Uh, you know how in a regular party back before we were all quarantined, we were able to like mingle and talk 
and uh, connect to each other and ask questions and exchange information and things like that. We're going to do a facsimile of that. It's not perfect, but it is a breakout that will happen through Zoom. And our, our incredible Nick Walsh is going to randomly send us into a breakout room for about six or seven minutes, probably about seven or eight people per room. It's random. And you'll get to talk and say hello, introduce yourself. If you want to use a cue question to get things started, um, we thought maybe you could all tell each other why. Like, why did you fall in love with film? What might have been the film or movie that you saw that made you commit to the art form? And uh, so then, in, then what you're gonna see at about minute six and a half is a, a thing on the screen that's gonna tell you that you're gonna get booted back into the main party. You just click on it and you come back here and we'll all hang out again and have some more music, okay? Right on guys, here we go. Not quite like a cocktail party, but sort of, right? That was amazing. No, it was amazing. Fun. It was I didn't fun. know who was gonna show up and pop up in what room. We have no Zoom. control over the room that you pop up in. So that was kind of fun to see wow. who you trapped That's in the room. Part. Yeah. What Zoom I had a great room. Everybody I did too. was so great. Wonderful. Did you learn something? About uh, everybody shared. Oh. Really great. And it was perfect timing. Everybody Yay. got to say something. I hear Barbara. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Barbara. Hi. We talked about um, we talked about like our ancestry and kind of the passage and all this all this time alone that get, lets us sit and really think about how did we get here and who did we come from and how are we going to move forward? And that was, I think, a really good thing to talk about right now. Well, you guys got really, really deep. I tell you, Camila, it, when I, I always get deep, man. Yeah, you told me. You told me, Julie. You told me that you get deep. I do. Yeah. <laughs> we just talked about our work and where we were and a little bit. Somebody was stranded in COVID, and so it was great. So oh, good. Hey, well, I'm glad everybody enjoyed it. I guess everybody's also going to be popping back in here around about the same time. Yeah, I think so. Um, and then I think... What is next on our part? We have our second block of filmmakers that That's are going to be talking with us. So, and, we'll uh, so we have block two of uh, filmmakers, and we're going to start with uh, Jesse Alk. Jesse was just in my breakout room. Uh, he's going to um, be presenting his film Pariah Dog, and he's also going to be presenting a film by his dad, a classic film called um, The Murder of Fred Hampton. Uh, Tagi Amirani will be next. His film, talk about his film. This is also a feature film, Coup 53. A great compliment, by the way, to Desert One. You see it because it looks into the history of US-British-Iranian um, relations in the period before the Shah of Iran. And so it goes back about a decade from Barbara Koppel's film. Uh, Viva Van Loke is here with Tightrope, Americans Reaching for Hope. Um, and uh, that was exciting because the, the, the main subject of that film, Nicholas Kristof, um, is actually participated in the Q&A after that film. Uh, then we're going to have some shorts filmmakers, James Babin, Tony Oswald, uh, and Cullen Parr. Um, and then we have a couple of uh, locally based filmmakers. The first one of the two being Joanne Feinberg. Joanne being uh, the person who's responsible for me being here because she was the artistic director before me and, uh, 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 and made way. Thank you so much, Joanne, and for building this festival uh, in those in that decade. Uh, that you were the director of programming. And now she's got a fantastic new film. She's a filmmaker called Bloom. Uh, Abram Katz is another, the second local filmmaker who'll be here. And I know you've all got your hopes up. It, they're about to be realized because another special guest filmmaker will make an appearance. So let's start with Jesse, Nick. All right, Jesse. Hi, everybody. I'm Jesse. Um, so my film's Pariah Dog. It's uh, India has. It's set in Kolkata, India, formerly Calcutta. Um, India has more street dogs than any other country, as far as we know. And um, the film is kind of an impressionistic look into the lives of these four 
lonely outsiders who've devoted themselves to taking care of straight dogs and sort of have made meaning in their lives out of that identity. Um, as you may have heard, Kolkata uh, three days ago was really decimated by uh, Cyclone MFAN. So if you'd like to find out more information about that or look into ways you can get involved, we have information on the Pride Dog Facebook page. Um, it's really, really devastated. Um, also, um, this incredible thing that, that um, Richard and Ashlyn decided to pair my film with my, my late father's film, The Murder of Fred Hampton, um, which is obviously, my father passed away when I was a child and that is, I'm very, very proud of that film. And um, it's, um, it's just really meaningful that they thought to do that. So big thank you to Ashlyn. Hi, um, can you hear me? Because it's- um, Yes, we can hear you fine. That's my time here. I'm in London and my housemates are asleep. So I have to speak quietly. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here and an honor for the film, for our film to be included in the festival. Uh, this, is, this is the film. Uh, 253. Um, it's a documentary about Iran's past with uh, America and Britain. Uh, in 1953, Iran had a democracy. Um, not many people know that. And that democracy was crushed and overthrown by the CIA and MI6. And we've spent 10 years uh, digging up archive material and witnesses, real witnesses who were there on the day of the coup to tell the story of what happened. Um, it took us 10 years to make the film because it's a scary film nobody wanted to fund. So we, we funded it entirely privately uh, from some amazing visionary supporters, mostly from Silicon Valley. Uh, it's been a pleasure and a thrill to make this film, mainly because it's edited by the legendary Walter Murch. Uh, those who know Walter will know who he is. Those who don't, they will know his films, Apocalypse Now, Godfather, Trilogy, The Conversation, and English Patient. Uh, and um, we found stuff that nobody ever imagined, including us, which turns the story inside out of what happened and what led to the mess that we're in right now, um, right through to the revolution and beyond. And it's on next Friday, uh, the 29th, and uh, we've done a Q&A uh, and an introduction with Walter and I. Uh, so tune in and uh, we'd love to hear your feedback and your questions. And um, and it's, 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 it's been worth waiting up for this because it's now four o'clock in the morning here in London. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, instead of having wine, you should just have some tea. There you go. <laughs> you, get, you get an award for the most dedicated I'm filmmaker. I'm already in the future. I'm in tomorrow. I'm, I'm on Saturday. Yes, you, you, yes. Guys are so yes, you guys are so yesterday. Warn us. <laughs> warn, up is, warn, up yeah. is, warn up is something happened. Yeah. I have one hour. I hope it's a good day. All right, guys, here's Viva. I'm just unmuting. Hi, I'm Viva. Um, very happy to be here. Thank you for having us. Um, yeah, I'm in New York. I'm the director of the feature documentary based on the book by Nicholas Kristoff and Cheryl Wudan, Tightrope, Americans Reaching for Hope. And it tells the story oh, of uh, Nick's hometown, Yamhill, Oregon. Can you still hear me? Yes. I yes. can hear you. Okay. Okay, great. Um, where um, he realized that gradually his friends from school and from the school bus were, were dying. A quarter of his friends have died since childhood. And so he sets off on a journey across the country to really understand what's happening, why people are slipping through the cracks um, and examining these, these deaths of despair. And, um, it's really a tale of, of community and empathy and all the solutions, you know, as Nick's so good in covering and Cheryl good, so, so good at covering, they already exist. We're simply not using them. So, you know, it feels particularly timely now when people are really asking, what can we do? How can we change? You know, Nick and Cheryl have been looking at this for a long time and now they're looking in the US. They were, they were you know, going overseas for a long time to do this. So you know, it's about amplifying the voices of ordinary people. We meet people from all walks of life and we meet people who are struggling and we meet people who are really succeeding against the odds. So yeah, I hope you'll check it out. It's on Monday, Monday the 25th. And um, yeah, it's, it's, 
it's there's a lot in there and you know i look forward to everyone else's film and also i just want to say thank you for the breakout rooms it was so wonderful to actually speak to people that have bought tickets to come and see our film oh, so yeah. thank one you we'll do it one more time <laughs> thank you so much thank you here's james hi i'm james babin um the ashland film festival t-shirt arrived yesterday um, so we got some good timing. Uh, my film is Train Stop. It's in a short uh, group. Uh, the shorts um, one, which is couples. Um, ours is about two people who are trying to make a connection at a train station and pretty much everything that can happen in a relationship goes through their minds in the seven or so minutes. Um, and really we had like a you know, we all met earlier on Zoom and it's a great group of filmmakers um, and a great, you know, I caught it. It's just such a great block. Um, and it's just really nice to be here with all of you. And, you know, in the breakout group, at least during this whole pandemic, I'm trying to get back to my why, you know, why did I uh, come into it? And some of it is just the community and the connection you have with people. And so it's nice to be part with all of you. Thank you. Here's Paisy, Tony. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks so much for having us back to Ashland. We wish we could be there with all of you, but this is pretty fun. Um, our short film is called Handheld. Here's the background. <laughs> um, and it's about a mother and son and a night in which they're forced to reckon with some questions about the past when they find an old handheld video camera. Um, so we shot this in Kentucky, which is where we're at right now. Um, and our nephew stars in the film. It's his first time acting. He does a great job. Um, there's some real archival footage in there. Um, and so we're, we're in the shorts one couples block. And so we're playing for the next three weeks. And we hope you all will check it out. Well, we have two films yes. in the festival. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other film that we uh, are involved with, we produced and edited a feature called A Dim Valley, which uh, the director is actually here right now. Um, Brandon, you want yes, to- Yes, I'm here. Hi, hello. <laughs> There's my bud, Brandon. You want to talk about A Dim Valley real quick? For sure. Um, a Dim Valley is a feature um, also shot in Kentucky. Um, it's going to be playing on May 31st at the festival. Um, it's kind of a magical fantasy comedy romance um, thing. It's a little unpredictable and kind of a weird fusion of genres. And uh, I'd be happy if you all check it out. Thank you. Thank you Thanks for you having guys. us, Ashley. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys. Here's Colin. Hi, everyone. Thank you to the. Ashland Film Festival and the whole yeah, Ashland Film Festival bringing us all together. Um, my name is Colin. I'm the director of the short documentary Charon. Charon is about short documentaries. Yes, it's a portrait of the artist Myron Dial, who lives in California. Uh, Myron has temporal lobe epilepsy, which causes him to have these kind of strange and intense visions in his seizures, which then become the basis for his art. He's had a pretty fascinating and often really painful life story. Um, so it's about his life and the way the art for him ended up this really sort of profound source of healing and transformation. Um, we also, we do some, we try to bring you into his head a little bit in some unusual ways. So I hope you all check it out. It's playing as part of Doc Short's One American Portraits. And have a good night. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Here's Joanne. Hi, everyone. I was just saying thank you to Richard for that lovely introduction earlier. I'm really thrilled to be here, and especially in the company of so many amazing filmmakers. And my film is Bloom. Um, uh, it's about a woman that if uh, you live in Ashland or have been to the festival, you might know her. She's dearly beloved in this valley. Uh, she was a longtime uh, volunteer for the festival at the Varsity, so you might have seen her taking your ticket. But more importantly, Joan Thorndike has been growing amazing organic flowers in the Rogue Valley for over 28 years. 
And about six years ago, I went to an event at one of her flower fields and it's just about a mile out of town, but I had never been there in 15 years. And I was just amazed to see this just gorgeous fields of flowers. And she invited us to go walk through and cut a bouquet to take home. And I was just determined at that moment to um, spread the word about this wonderful woman um, who brings so much joy to all of us. So many people do know about her flowers, but also about the importance of buying local, growing organic, and family. There's a lot of themes of family. So, um, and also really want to mention um, the soundtrack is by Jeff, who's playing music this evening. And um, it's, thank you, Jeff. It's a really beautiful track that he recorded in the Oregon Caves acoustic guitar. So thrilled to have that accompany um, this. And it's a local crew from Ashland. Uh, so hopefully it's a film, it's three minutes and would just lift your spirits, um, you know, in these trying times. Thank you. Thank you so much. Here's Abram. <laughs> Sorry about the mute button. <laughs> All good. Go okay. for you. So hi everyone. Um, let's see. This is a cheers to you. I don't know how to get in the screen, but there it is. Cheers to everyone in your creative process. Cheers, um, Abram. Thank you. Cheers. Uh, this film came out of um, <clears throat> our second year at Ashland High School, um, hosting a workshop called Reflections, where the students write personal narrative and create masks and performance pieces out of their process. So um, I'm very process oriented. Um, and this is my first film that I've edited. And um, so it's fun to dive into that process and kind of feel the um, meta process of the whole thing. That's the last time I'll say that word. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I just felt um, a big opening in my creative heart and my um, mind related to the power of film and um, it was such a joy to bring this all together. It's called High School Reflections. Basically, like the like the of my work for the last fifteen years, the last fifteen years, and um, and um, being in a position to empower others to use their voice, express who they are, and kind of help lift others up. Um, if you'll see if you watch the trailer, which isn't exactly a trailer, it's basically the students reflecting on their experience watching their own. Um, personal story revealed. Um, I think that's probably enough, uh, but I'm very excited for my next film project called The Gentleman, and I'm going to be pumping it and promoting it all over. Um, thank and you. Bro. I'll talk more about that at another time. So thanks for letting me be here and just being part of the community. Thank you so much. Hey, He's our special guest here. He is Jonathan oh, Scorsese. Oh my God. Hello, hello, hello. How's it going? Rich, you look good. You look great. You've been doing a lot. Have you been working out, huh? <laughs> totally. Hello, okay. It is great to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, so uh, so uh, I, got a, I got a new film that I've been wanting to try out. Uh, and I was wondering if you, you, you wouldn't mind showing it at your, at your festival, okay? So uh, Whatever now, you make now bear with me. It's a fresh new take. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. So, you know, it's a new film. Uh, I got to do something fresh, you know, 21st century, you know, 21st century. So, here's the idea. It's called Uber Driver. What do you think? <laughs> so, wait, 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 before you, before you, okay, it's called, it's, it, uh, let me tell you who it's starring. My good friend Bobby. My good Ooh. friend Bobby. Robbie De Niro. Robert, look, wait, there he is. There he is. Robert De Niro, right there. Okay, so here's what it is. It's a neo-noir psychological thriller set in a decaying and morally bankrupt New York City following the Vietnam War. Okay, sounds fun, right? The film tells the story of a lonely Uber driver who descends into insanity as he plots to assassinate the presidential candidate and the pimp of an underage prostitute he befriends. Hey, and here's the great part, it's only seven hours long, okay? <laughs> right? That's pretty good for me, okay. <laughs> sounds fun, anyway, I hope you enjoy, I gotta, I gotta go. Bobby's actually here at the door. So I'll talk to you soon. Good to see you, Rich. 
Thanks so much, Johnny Scorsese. Thanks so much, Johnny Scorsese. Well, thank you so much. That was amazing. Uh, Julie? Yeah. I, w I was going to ask Nick if we uh -huh. could try an experiment. Nick, are you there? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, this is like the time of the evening where I want to say, how's everybody doing? And then I want to hear everybody go, woohoo, except I won't hear you say woohoo because most of you are going to be muted. Can we all try to be really loud at one time? Like five mm -hmm. seconds. We can do right. body language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so, that was a very satisfying moment so thank you very much for that i just wanted to make sure everybody was doing okay before we break out into what what is next camila yeah so we have some music coming up and also we want to thank some of our presenting sponsors oh yeah let me let me get my beautiful list up of some of our sponsors that we've got. Oh, we've got, right. um, yeah. uh, let's oh, see, now, right? we, JPR, the Ashland Springs Hotel. Yes. Group, uh, the Rogue Creamery, oh. delicious. There's, there's you. And, and uh, TC Chevy, all of these wonderful more. folks that you'll see. Oh, the live right now. The cameras these are, are our, our presenting sponsors. So thank you so much. You could not make this happen thank without you. you. Absolutely. So now we're going to go ahead and turn it back on over to Jeff and Inger. So we're going to queue it up and get another groove started. And then we'll come back to you guys with uh, our another breakout section. Then we'll see some more uh, filmmakers. And then we got some more stuff headed for, uh, for you for the for the evening. And uh, so I'm waiting on Jeff and yeah. Inger oh, yeah, to get right queued here. up. And you guys I, can go we're ahead. Just, we're, we're verklempt over here because uh, Jonathan Scorsese is here. Uh, I know. Oh my God! Team. You know, it just makes. I, I, I gave him my resume. I snuck him my resume and headshot. Did Good you get idea. a chance to do the same? Well, you know, and and to hear all these stories and these films, we're so excited to see all these films. Uh, we know what we're going to be doing for the next few weeks. So, it's a beautiful <laughs> opportunity. And oh, so you're just trying to score one of his movies? I heard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, besides that, of course, I want to score music for all these filmmakers. So I'm sure. Please contact me anytime sure. you want. And this next song is actually uh, was brought to us. Uh, a, a client of ours because we have a recording studio here. And, well, let uh, it. So, well, let it rip, Jeff. Yeah, my friend Greg yes. brought this tune in. It's called Songs in Your Hat. Yes. It's a fun little ditty. I love Some sweet guitar playing. You're walking along and you're hearing this song. Oh, some drums from the air, background singing is there. Turn the notes of the scales upside down. You can even turn them back all around. Like hitting the light switch inside of your head. Just pull the rabbit out of your head instead. Songs in your head, nothing better than that. Songs in your head, something better not said. Songs in your head, a magician in fact. Songs in your head, got to pull them out and put them back. I see you, Chris and Susan. <laughs> Can I on, Daniel? nothing wrong it's all better create a simple twist of fate throw it up in the air make it up on the get down step on out to the mag just like riding a bike turn the notes of the scales upside down you can even turn them back all around like hitting the light switch inside of your head just pull that sucker right out of your head instead. 
Songs in your hand, nothing better than that. Hey. Songs in your hand, sometimes better not said. Uh, songs in your hand, a magician in fact. Songs in your head, got to pull them out and put them back. Put them back. Where they go know. back to, uh, Jeff? I mean, where they go back? I'm sorry. Where do they go back to? Oh, anywhere you want, honey. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so. Much. <laughs> All right, y'all. You see, it's a groove with Jeff and Inger. Thank you so much. I can listen to you guys. All night, I can tell you that. I wish I was right there in the same room with you. I know as we yeah. all do, but it's so wonderful being a part of this community and this <laughs> event tonight. Uh, big ups to Ashland and, uh, Independent Film Festival. Thank you so much, Richard, and everybody who's been working hard to bring this together. Oh, now yeah, we're let's, going let's say hello to all the staff. Let's clap real loud. For yes, there's so many people who put all this together. There's so many folks are all on the website. <laughs> They've worked so hard, Erica and Molly and Candace and Linnea and Richard and 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 y'all just yell out names. Um, everybody that's been involved. Uh, has been doing so much work. Yes, Erica, yes, Candace, yes. Molly, Leah, Leah Lania, yeah, everybody. Kelly, Jonna, Susan, Angie, everybody. Everybody. Um, Thank you. It's our pleasure. We love bringing these great films to you guys. It's wonderful seeing you all. What you can do is go to the website and it's got all of the, all of the board, all of the staff, all of the programmers, everybody that's worked so hard to make this happen. Um, and you can, you know, email them and, or send them a note or like a, a care package of some kind of wonderful snack uh, because they've worked so hard to pivot to make this happen. Um, it's been really amazing to watch. So just huge applause. And also huge applause, applause to the wine. I'm drinking the Tempranillo, Thank which is you. the Ashland Independent Film Festival wine tonight. And yeah. um, uh, it's adding to my uh, ambiance for the evening, everyone. <laughs> so I hope you also get a chance to get that. And next, we're moving to our next block. Yes, cheers. So we've got our uh, third block of film. All right. So um, let's see. In this group, we start with the uh, feature film makers. Um, uh, uh, four directors, Sarah Dosa is first, uh, The Seer and the Unseen, an amazing documentary about uh, uh, an environmentalist seer from um, mm. Iceland. Kath Kathy Lee Crane, I don't think I'm allowed to say the name of her film because this is a sneak preview. Uh, we're calling it a borderland film by Kathy Lee Crane. So that's, uh, maybe she'll tell you more. Uh, Deborah Schaefer is here with Queen of Hearts, Audrey Flack, and yeah. Sophie Sartain with Bird Dog Nation. On then to a couple of short film makers, Quinn Else and Lance Larson, and, um, and then two more short filmmakers from the area, from in the Locals program, Nathaniel Lathrop and Lainey DeKino. Uh, and then I'm very hopeful that uh, a special guest from Italy <laughs> may be coming. So Beautiful. Uh, everybody get your hopes up. I think he may show up. Okay, yeah. let's start with uh, Sarah Dosa. Uh, hi, everybody. It's wonderful to be here. This is actually my third Ashland Independent Film Festival. 
Um, so it, it's a real joy. And I'm just so amazed and impressed by the creativity and ingenuity that went into um, this amazing after party that we're in. Uh, so my film is called The Seer and the Unseen. And briefly, it's a magic, realist, environmental mm. fable about an Icelandic grandmother who can see and communicate with spirits of nature, which in Iceland is thought of as elves. Um, it's such a prevalent belief in Iceland, over about 50% of the country believes in elves, uh, so much so that government officials, um, individuals, uh, people who are looking to develop land will call upon Braka, my, my protagonist, who can see the elves, to consult um, to know where they can develop their land. But the problem is not everybody listens. And so my film follows um, Raka. She's trying to sell, save this threatened elf territory, the Slava field that's about We're to be this. demolished by a totally um, needless road construction project. The end of the unseen. Yes, the seer in the unseen. Um, but the film ends up becoming kind of a, a story about the power of belief, not just of um, the belief in elves, but also the belief of the marketplace, um, which is something perhaps we can all relate to in this moment. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it at that. Um, just one quick thing to say, Joanne Feinberg was actually one of the very first people I spoke to about the film when I was at Ashland with my first film the last season, uh, many years ago. So Joanne, if you're still on, just thank you for that first conversation. And I love how, yeah, just the continuity of being here now, having Joanne's film here now and all of us together. All right, we're moving on to Deborah. Could you please unmute yourself? Um, I'm I'm really happy to be here, even though it's uh, it's well, after it's almost 11:30 on the East Coast, and I said in my breakout group, I'm also over, I'm in between whoever was in the Berkshires and Tom Kalen, who's in the Catskills. I'm in Hudson Valley um, right now, and um, so my film is Audrey Flack, Queen of Hearts. It's a Queen of Hearts, Audrey Flack, and it's playing on June 3rd. And Audrey Flack is. Um, going to be 89 years old in one week. Um, and I think I really made this film initially what attracted me to her. I, I didn't know that much about her work when I started it, but I was interested in the problems of, of an older artist, frankly. And you know, how does, how do, how does she keep going? And uh, if you see the film, you'll see, she's an amazing, amazing person and artist and teacher and woman and mother and um, really an inspiration. This is one of her paintings behind me um called queen and um you can see where we got the title for the film from the painting and uh, audrey was the only really woman photorealist painter in the early days of photorealism and it was not an easy road to hoe and she was involved in the women's movement and she has a disabled child and she had a a, a big me too moment before there was a me too um, movement. So the film is much more than just an art film. It's a it's a film about a woman's life, really, and um, at, but also relevant to the story of art in the second half of the the twentieth century, the beginning of the twenty first century. So uh, we think there's a lot in it. We're very proud of it. We're very proud to be showing it in Ashland. It's my first time in Ashland. I'm sorry, I'm not there in person, but um, as Richard said, maybe maybe next year. <laughs> <laughs> So hope to see you all on June 3rd, and I hope to see all of your films. Thank you, Deborah. Here's Sophie. All right, hello everyone. It's so, so great to be here. Thank you, Ashland, for programming my film, Bird Dog Nation, which will be screening on June 8th. So I hope you guys can uh, come see the film. Um, after the 2018 midterm election, there was a lot of talk about these suburban women who helped flip the house. Um, and that is kind of the entry point of this film. It's these, uh, the journey of these women who were activated um, after the 2016 election. And um, they connected with a group called the Bird Dog Nation. And these are major, major activists who are out there fighting uh, for healthcare, fighting for dreamers, uh, fighting so many important um, uh, battles for us. Um, they include um, activists like Adi Barkin, who is a, a young father with ALS, who is uh, um, fighting for um, Medicare for All, and Ana Maria Archila, who is the woman who confronted uh, Senator Jeff Flake in the elevator during the Brett Kavanaugh hearings. So these are, these are major activists and it profiles them um, and shows how they transform these women and um, 
I think probably overall, I think that as the person making the film, I wanted to show that small efforts and grassroots activism can really make a difference and um, show how it made a difference in 2018 and hopefully inspire people to get more involved as we face this uh, big election we have coming up uh, this year. So um, I hope you all will um, watch the film. Many of the activists joined me for the Q&A afterwards, including Adi and a bunch of people from, from the film. Um, it's uh, Bird Dog Nation on June 8th. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Sophie. Here's Quinn. Hello, am I coming through? Yep. Yep. Great. Uh, this is my first uh, Ashland Film Festival, so I'm, thank you for having me. It's an honor. Uh, I'm the director of Fort Irwin, which is a short uh, fictional action film about a real place and real people. Uh, it's about a, a military base called Fort Irwin, which is uh, about three hours outside of Los Angeles. U.S. Army has built uh, entire, it's, they call it an artificial Afghanistan. They've built entire fake Middle Eastern villages in the desert that they populate with actors that they then um, run very hyper-realistic and very violent training exercises uh, with soldiers. Uh, and occasionally they'll hire um, amputee actors to get in the makeup and act as if their limbs have been destroyed by explosions and the uh, Soldiers will apply tourniquets to them and whatnot. Uh, and then on top of that, occasionally they'll hire um, veteran amputees. So people who very directly relive the loss of their limbs as a part of these training exercises. Um, so that's what the film's about. Uh, I'd really like to thank our main actor, Christian, who is an amputee veteran. His name's Christian Ballet. Uh, and I thought he did a great job in the film. Um, and that's it, thank, thank you, you very much. All right. Hi. Thank you. Um, I have a film uh, called A Key to Memory. Uh, I shot it last June in upstate New York. And um, it's, it's based off of the perspective of um, my mom. When uh, she was younger, she would go to a, um, a family farm that right now is around 200 years old. Years and old. Um, my uh, my uh, the story is about um, my actor, who was actually my sister, kind of walking through the house, um, playing the part of my mom, essentially, and um, hearing all the memories and uh, fondness and sounds uh, of the household that she remembers as she's walking through. And... Uh, a really low budget short film. I uh, only shot it in one day on a five-year-old DSLR, but um, it was really a experiment on what kind of story I could tell through sound, because that's really what the second half is, is telling stories that are different from what you get visually, uh, just through music and voices and sound. Thank you. I think we got Lainey coming up. Thank you. Yes. So rad to be here and to get to join you all for this. I know we all had an objective with the art behind us and this is actually a piece of art from the movie. It Look was, at that. Um, can you see it? Yes. Is that rad? I know. Yes, we can. The whole uh, film, uh, you'll see this play out in the, um, in the film. It's about, we've been, I'm an Ashland filmmaker and we've been dealing with the smoke for our summers. And we wanted to kind of approach how it is for us to be going through that as individuals. And then how can we move forward through that? What is funny is that the gal in the story, well, not funny, she ended up in isolation for a long time. And um, it's amazing how relevant the story ends up being in this situation that we're doing now. So it's kind of a, it's a reflection on how we're processing the pandemic too. And, um, and it's called The West is Burning, and it's in the Locals block that's about narratives. And um, if I have one more thing I could just add in, not just that I got to work with an amazing team, so I hope you get to see it so you can see their amazing work. 
But uh, this film festival has been such an inspiration to not just me, which is really staggering, but this community as a whole, we've uh, learned so much more about film as a group and we can have intimate dialogues where we've seen the same films. And I just saw Barbara Coppola's, Coppola, Cop <laughs> sorry, I know you're on here. I saw that, I just saw Crackle. your desert one and it was just a the amazingly great film, well-crafted, great story beautiful storytelling and that's the sort of thing that we get to have by this film festival being in our town and I can't be more grateful and I salute you all for having the tenacity to do this in spite of the conditions. Thank you, Thank you so much. Ah, our special guest, did it arrive? Oh my god, it's Jonathan Fellini. Ciao. Oh. Ciao. Grazie. 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 Uh, uh, thank you for Richard for uh, having me today. I am coming to you all the way from Rome, and actually, if I'm honest, uh, even further from the grave. From the grave. So it is right. a very nice <laughs> to be here today. So today I have a film for you that I've always wanted to produce, but did not get to produce in my life at time, but it's called Eight and Three Quarters. <laughs> so uh, I would say uh, it is a, um, how do you say, a surrealist uh, comedy drama. Yeah, yeah. It follows an Italian filmmaker, yeah? Uh, yeah, who yeah, yeah, suffers yeah. from stifled creativity uh, as he attempts to direct a epic a science fiction film, as you say in the States. Uh, and, uh, you know, I must say, it was, was a very funny experience doing this film. Uh, you know, just trying to see myself in the faces of another actor and in the clothes and everything. Just try to, you know, see my set uh, with a detached uh, eye. You know, after two weeks, I began to walk different. And I, my electrician actually say, hey, Mr. Fellini. And I say, what? <laughs> he say, he say, you have something in uh, a, a, your skin. And I say, why you say? And he say, you are walking like a robot. And I say, no, it's just a film. All this to say. I had a very a, a spiritual experience of making this one. And I hope you enjoy it. Grazie, grazie. Grazie, grazie. 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 Yes. Thank you. Oh my God. God. Richard, I did not know you were so well connected. This festival has Paul. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. I don't know how you're going to top yourself when we come back. I just don't know. Just you wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for that. Uh, meeting all those wonderful filmmakers. I hope all of you get a chance to go and see all of those films. Um, Julie, do you have anything yeah. you want to say before we hear our music? I think I just am glad everybody's having a good time. We're getting to know each other. We're going to have um, one more breakout session after mm -hmm. the music comes up. So get your networking hats back on. And uh, yeah, let's listen to some music. Cool. All right. Thank you. You know, I'm, I'm still reeling. Uh, Jonathan Fellini, I mean, to be witness to someone composing and decomposing at the same time is an amazing <laughs> opportunity. Uh, this is a blues tune. Actually, in 2016, I was uh, inducted into New York Blues Hall of Fame. And so we got to do a, a dance and kind of blues thing here. Right. Right. Out to Jennifer and Terry, who are in the audience. Yes. Oh, we're having a little technical moment. Sorry. That's all right. That's what happens sometimes. Talk amongst yourselves for one minute. No. Well, every now and then we have to just be forgiving of the fact that technology is catching up with us and our needs, I think. Uh, I think it's kind of a, a wonder that we're doing this at all, frankly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we've had up to 135 people on this party, so we're doing really great. You ready? Also, we want to yes. shout out to our board members. Oh, our board members. All of our board members. Uh-oh. Well, we're we waiting on that Sorry. One. We'll wait. Maybe one day 
Hey, Barbara. Wake up. Yeah. Wake up, baby, you'll be mine. Hey, Hassani. Hey. I want you wearing that mask, Tamsin. Look at that. Oh, I've been dreaming, baby. <laughs> How, Jim? Dream that day when we made love. Ooh, woo. I've been dreaming, baby. Woo. Dreaming the day we made love. Sing, Jeff. Maybe my obsession. I like this whole screen with everybody dancing. Look at that. Yeah. I throw my family down to that wishing well. Keep on hoping that you come to me. Yes, I will. Do I have to do? Make it happen, baby. Throw my family down that wishing well. Y'all look good out there. Oh my gosh. Why are you getting down? It's like mine too. Go, Jonathan. Oh, Go, Jonathan. Goodness. Yeah, Jonathan. Pulling me right through the screen, Jonathan. Yes. We see you, Chris and Susan and Allison. Play it, Jeff. I can't be responsible. girls are having some fun. Heaven's just a waste of time. Yeah, everybody sing. I throw my penny down to the wishing well. Keep on hoping that you'll come to me. Yes, I will. Do I have to do? Make it happen, baby. I throw my penny down that wishing well. Oh, one more time. Throw my penny down to that wishing well. I hope it let you come to me. Yes, I will. Do my attitude. Make it happen, baby. Throw my penny down that way. Shen. Well. Hey. Woo! Woo! Thank you. Woo, that was so good. Yes. But where does the penny go, Jeff and Inger? Who gets the penny? Goodness gracious. Goodness huh? gracious, Camila. Camila. Okay, that's the answer? 
Camila, I think it's a metaphor for something. Je I think oh, so. really? Jeff used, to, Jeff used to say, by accident, he'd go, throw my baby down to that wishing well. <laughs> no, 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 not babies. No, I never said that. <laughs> no, Jeff, not the babies. You don't want to put <laughs> a baby in a well. That's well, you know you got you a no, good no, no. woman, Jeff, because she corrected you on that. Yeah, I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> 16 Thank years, you. honey. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, y'all. Amazing. I want to. I, I really wish we could hit replay on that, but you know, the night is not about me. Next time. Um, it's, <laughs> got more. it's about everybody else. So we'll uh, take that, but we'll try to tune in to you then on Sunday if everybody wants that uh, awesome. double dose. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Live 6 p.m. Yes. Uh, Pacific Standard Time on Sunday on um, Jeff Pivar. And, um, I'm sorry, May 31st. Yeah. yeah. Jeff Pivar and Ingra Nova Facebook page, um, and also Jeff Pivar YouTube page. All right, y'all heard you. it. Thank you. Well, I thank you so it's much. time for a breakout group. Yep, it is. Breakout. That's that time. So uh, Nick is going to put us in our breakout room sessions. We'll see you there on the other side. All right, everybody, hang the on. The virtual universe. Right, let's go. Well, it for looks sure. like we are back, everybody. Yes. We're oh, back. Yeah. We're back in time for our last filmmaker interviews. Camila, did you have yep. a wonderful time in your group? I did. I did. I'm not going to call anybody out, but we had one person who was silent the whole time. I'm not going to oh. call him out, <laughs> but I think he likes to listen. So we're going to let him uh, listen. But it was a great room. And uh, this was so fun. And I hope all of you are having so much fun with that. We learned so much. And now we're going to our next block yes. uh, to talk with our, our next group of filmmakers. And yes. our Richard, we're going to turn it over to you. This there is you the go. last this, this is the last group of filmmakers we've got. And uh, kicking it off will be uh, Cindy Abel, whose film is a premiere. We're premiering her film, Surviving the Silence, on uh, June 1st, which is the start of Pride Month. Uh, Milena Pastrick has the film uh, Pigeon Kings. Uh, and then the third, as a Nick Alexander with a locally produced feature. On from him to Danny, Danny Weeder and Jessica Garrison, uh, our two filmmakers in our curated shorts programs, and ending up with two uh, local shorts filmmakers who I know well, Ginny Auer and Kathy Rosselli. And then uh, I believe a filmmaker whose film was voted in the recent Sight and Sound poll, the greatest film of all time. I mean, this guy is worth waiting for and he will culminate our night of filmmaker <laughs> presentation. So let's start with Cindy Abel. Thanks, Richard. Hi, Ashland. Hey, filmmakers. And thank you so much to all the staff and volunteers for making this possible. I know this is no small task even in the best of times. So as Richard said, I'm Cindy L. Abel. I'm the director and producer of Surviving the Silence. And this will be our world premiere with y'all on June 1st. And we are just so honored to be able to share our film with you then. And tonight we've got a couple of our stars with us. And I think they're waving right now. Uh, Colonel Pat Thompson and Barbara Brass. Hey, ladies. Um, and we tell their story in our documentary. And it's basically a love story, the story of two women in love who help change military policy. Yay. And we delve Welcome. into their lives. And we talk about what they had to do and how they had to be silent to protect the relationship and also protect Colonel Thompson's career. In wow. addition to being a love story, it also reveals some unknown history. It talks about the role that Colonel Thompson played behind the scenes when she was forced to expel an army hero from the service for being a lesbian, but the way she did it ends up resulting in that hero's reinstatement. And that hero's name is Colonel Margareta Kammermeyer, and in 1995, Barbara Streisand made a movie about her. But no one knew about Colonel Thompson until a few years ago, and this will be the first time that that story gets told. And together, both of those women played an important part as well, one up front, the other, Colonel Thompson behind the scenes, um, in helping repeal the anti-gay military policy, Don't Ask, Don't Tell. So mm. if you want to watch a film that combines a love story, some hidden history, and the triumph of coming out to be leaders after they'd been hidden for so long, join us in watching Surviving the Silence, watch the Q&A with those three ladies yes. on Monday, June 1st, and also we'll be on the festival's Facebook chat 
our Facebook page for a live chat. So again, thank you all so much. And we look forward to seeing you in a week. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I, uh, my name is Milena Pastrash. I'm the director of Pigeon Kings, which is a feature length documentary about a tight knit group of men in South Central LA who train pigeons to do somersaults in unison. And so it's just a look into that world. There's actually a World Cup for these pigeon fanciers. So it's a worldwide sport, but the film is just all about this group of men in South Central LA and really an intimate character driven film about the godfather of the whole scene. So cool. Thank you so much. Here's Nick. All right. Good morning. Uh, evening, everyone. <laughs> Not morning yet. Well, um, my name is Nick Alexander, and I am the director of the feature length film uh, documentary. It's called Illegal. Illegal chronicles the miraculous journey of Salvadoran immigrant Laz Ayala, the challenges of present day immigration, and his mission to humanize immigrants and reform US immigration policy for the benefit of all. Originally, uh, as the director, my motivation for telling Laz's story was biographical. I wanted to give the American public an opportunity to step into the immigrant's shoes and learn about their story of desire, struggle, and success. However, I can tell you that Laz's story, his narrative, is not just a feel-good underdog success story, but about finding a solution to the conundrum of illegal immigration. One that is humane, impartial, and it's a win-win for the migrant, the employer, and the American society. So this is my first feature film, and I couldn't be more grateful for the opportunity to screen at AIFF this year. I'm super excited, and I hope you can all see it on uh, Thursday, June 11th. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. Here's Danny. Hi. Um... Thank you so much for all of this, Ashlyn. This is uh, incredible. Um, I couldn't quite get my poster to work, so I'll try to drop it in the chat. Um, but my name is Danny Weeder, and I am the director of a short film called Cool for Five Seconds, which is in Shorts Block One Couples. Um, the film was shot and made in Chicago, uh, where I am right now. Um, and the piece is about a woman who invites her sister to reconnect with her after a long time of being estranged but under somewhat false pretenses and the film follows their encounter. So it's a real time, very intimate piece that kind of dissects this relationship and explores for me, the kind of strange feeling of uh, not feeling like you uh, understand or like you no longer know someone who you love. Um, so the piece is about, the script is about control and, and fear, but it's ultimately about potential and possibility and what might be possible between people if we allow ourselves to be uh, vulnerable and meet people um, as they are and where they're at and, and uh, meet them again and uh, learning who they've become. Uh, so the piece actually has a kind of unique background. It started as a play, uh, which I directed in winter of 2017. And it's written by a Chicago playwright named Calamity West, who um, is an amazing playwright. She's had 10 world premieres in Chicago um, I absolutely adore her work. And as I was directing this piece, I was so in love with her writing that I felt like more people needed to see it and I wanted to turn it into a film. So um, the actors from that original play came on as the producers of this film. Um, and they are actually here uh, today, Catherine Born Taylor and Mary Tilden. Um, if you guys wanted to say hello. Hello. Uh, so there's Catherine Hi. Um, and Mary. And um, in the spirit of the kind of interdisciplinary nature of our project, my team and I actually cur have begun curating a series of variety evenings in Chicago called Stage by Screen. So they're half theater, half film, and then there's an industry panel uh, at the end that's an interdisciplinary industry panel with early and mid-career industry leaders um, sharing information about the state of their respective fields. Um, so we are uh, first time filmmakers. We are so excited to be here and share this experience with Ashlyn. Thank you so much for having so us. We are so excited to see everybody else's films. Thank you so much. Here's Jessica. Hi, am I? Yep, yep you're on. Okay. Hi, 
I'm Jessica Garrison. Um, I wrote and directed Dime, which is a short film. Um, and it is uh, about a, a woman who just comes back from Vegas um, who has a shitload of uh, cash in her purse and needs to explain to her boyfriend how she got it, which is a little bit shady and, and an argument ensues. And um, it's kind of a chamber drama. Um, that's definitely a drama, but I kind of uh, I lovingly think of it as a comedy. Um, I think it has some dark humor to it. And um, also like Danny, I, it, was, it started as a play. It was a one act play that I wrote for a theater company here in Los Angeles. And um, yeah, we turned it into a film, which took some massaging and um, some weird rehearsals. Um, but we got it and we got the tone finally. And uh, now it's this little film that I'm really proud of. And uh, yeah, I hope you like it. Thank you. Here's Jenny. So, uh, hi, I'm Jenny Auer, and I am the director and writer of Hair Today, Gone Tomorrow. I am a first time filmmaker, a long time lover of story and storytelling. And um, I'm so excited to be a part of this film festival. I'm so excited about the fact that you were able to do this amazing thing in the middle of this amazing, incredible uncertainty. So thank you for that. Um, and uh, my film is a story uh, based in some personal experience. Uh, it's about a couple that is, uh, finds their, um, their world upended by a cancer diagnosis. And, um, and so um, I'm hopeful that um, it'll provide other people a, a little bit of catharsis if you've ever known anyone who's gone through something like that and perhaps some assistance in the long run um, through resources on a little web page following it. Um, but it's been a thrill to do. I was excited to be able to work with so many incredible uh, artisans here in town. There is a reason that Ashland is the best place to live and work as a filmmaker. And I got to find out and learn that uh, firsthand um, by participating and being the writer director of this film. So I'm really excited to share it with you all. I'm excited to watch your films. They all sound amazing as usual. Um, I am sad that I don't get to see you in person, but maybe next year. For sure. Here's Kathy. So I'm taking up the rear and uh, I kind of think it's uh, appropriate because my film is about a composting toilet. <laughs> on, <laughs> on Mount Shasta that happens to be the highest working composting toilet in the United States. And um, I actually lived in Mount Shasta for 18 years. And so it was really fun to go back to kind of my old stomping grounds. And um, this is a, a film that talks about how you take care of a composting toilet that's at 7,900 feet. It's at horse camp where all the climbers go up on the mountain. And it yeah. really ends up being an interesting way to talk about leaving no trace in the wilderness. And um, I just want to say that the Ashland Film Festival folks rock. This is like the best VIP pass I've ever had going yeah. in my scrapbook. Thank you very much. And uh, Thank you, Kathy. Okay, do we have our final special okay, guest? We have our final special guest. Oh, the master, oh, of, suspense. The master of suspense. Hello, Richard. Not good to see you again. <laughs> I know what you did. Anyway. <laughs> I'm only doing this because you asked me, okay? By the way, there aren't any actors here on there, are they? I, I hate actors. Not at all. Actors, Not at all. Are, really. All right, good. Well, then I'll tell you about my newest film. It's called Crazy. <laughs> now, it's a psychological thriller. Cutting edge, really. It's based off a novel, and the film centers on an encounter between a secretary uh, who ends up at a secluded motel after stealing money from her employer, yes. And the motel's owner-manager. 
and uh, um, its um, aftermath. Anyway, I won't bore you like these other filmmakers. <laughs> I hope you like it, and I hope it doesn't scare you too much. <laughs> Goodbye, Richard. Oh, thank you, Alfred. I had no idea had no that, he was, I, that he was actually I, grouchy. I thought he was friendly. I don't know. I know. I'm, I'm shell-shocked. I don't know what to think. I do I'm, know, though, that we're coming to the close of our evening, and it would behoove us to say again thank you so much to our presenting sponsors who are i think we've got ashland, ashland home net uh Go. coming attractions theater project a jpr ashland springs hotel road creamery tc chevy thank you so much oh yes and we've got we've got um richard and erica candace molly uh, Leo, Linnea, Kaylee, uh, Jana, Susan, and of course Nick Walsh for running Zoom tonight. Mm -hmm. um, the board: Stephen Sloan, Carol Jensen, Anna Ashbury, uh, Tim Johns, Chris Lucas, Marty, Marty Rosen, Rosen, Craig Gordon, Richard. David Griffiths. Yes. So, and m many, many volunteers, and um, all of our pres all of our screening volunteers are on the website. Please go, and uh, you know give your 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 joy out to them thank you so much well, it's called donate yeah oh yeah you could donate you could just yeah. make a gift <laughs> you know this stuff doesn't happen by itself you know and uh so thank you so much for all that you do but uh definitely any donations but, that you have uh, to keep to continue the legacy is always <laughs> wonderful and it's always a plus you know uh, even in this time we know we have a lot of stuff happening on the front lines you know the artists are second in that line just know that because we mm -hmm. need uh, mm -hmm. this platform of artists to uh, make the work and do the things that they are doing. So if you can, we love yeah. to have that happen as well. And I also- say, I want to thank oh, you, Camila. Thank you for, for playing this whole game with me tonight, Camila. Well, thank you, uh, 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 Julie. And for all, you, you know, this is not the first time we've tag team. No. We're, we're um, like um, the Wonder Twins. I love Another you. alternate universe, right? Yeah. But when we touch hands, we want to put you, yeah, we make things happen, everybody. I just want you to know this is not our first time at the rodeo together. So we, we thank do Jonathan, that. too, for being such a great uh, playmate and dancing and, and giving us. Wait, did I miss all the, wait, wait, I heard there was directors. Did I miss everyone? I you missed everybody. everybody. <laughs> Jonathan, what oh, were you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was making drinks. Really, I Jonathan, really? Did you oh. fall asleep? Was it the Negroni? What was it? It was. Next time, maybe. Next time, I guess I can... Uh, well, I guess we have to hear from uh, Richard now because you make everything. Uh, okay. All right. Well, just want to um, uh, encourage everyone, please spread the word. Uh, this was opening day, 23 days to go. You might tell them some of the things they may not know. Every single program is accompanied by an introduction by the filmmaker and the Q&A. And some amazing guests showed up for those Q&As, the editor, Walter Hirsch, uh, uh, Merch, the uh, cinematographer, El El Ellen Kouris, Nataki Garrett, Octavio Solis, uh, yeah. the journalist, Nicholas Kristoff. So uh, let people know about that. This is, again, we, 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 we put all this effort into really making this a festival experience. Also let people know to go to Facebook, um, to the festival's Facebook page, because uh, when the films are shown, the day the feature films are shown, the filmmakers will be there to answer questions and respond to comments. So that's your way of interacting. The Q and A's are pre-recorded, but please uh, check that out and let them know what you think. Also rate the films because the films will be up for audience awards at the end. And we're going to take a look at the rating. So you go to the films page on, uh, um, on the Film Festival Flick site and give it a rating and it may end up getting the audience award. And finally, I just want to mention that we're going to gather again uh, closing night, June 14th, and we're going to have our awards night that's going to be hosted by the actor Bruce Campbell. That's when we're going to give out the jury awards. Our special award filmmakers are going to be there receiving awards and uh, the audience awards and the filmmakers um, will be present receiving those uh, $10,000 will be given out by Bruce Campbell that night and Jeff and Inger will be back. So yes. uh, yeah. 
So I want to thank you, Julie and Camilla. Um, thank you. So, so much you. for doing this. Inger and Jeff for your thank great you. performing. Uh, Jonathan, Luke Stevens, Incredible. thank you so Inger much. Uh, Nick Walsh behind the scenes and uh, Erica and uh, Candace. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank, thank all you. of you for coming. Thank you, Richard. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Richard. Thank you, Richard. Thank you all. I know there's an echo. One more amazing song with the incomparable Inger and Jeff. Thank you so much. All right, Jeff and Inger, right. take us out Woo. and group us on out. Yeah, do yourself a favor and check out Inger's website at uh, ingerjorgensen.com, S-E-N.com. She's a master sculptor. Oh, boy. Master. Oh, thank yeah. you for being here tonight, guys. Yeah. And pivar.com, Jeff Pivar. You know, I think we're going to play two songs in a row, and you can hang out with us if you want, and Great. you can file out or, you know, make your drinks, dance around with us. We'd love to have you here. Thank you and for thank playing. Thank you for guys. being involved in the arts, and it's just such an important part of our communities and it's kept us all alive, I think, during this pandemic. So Absolutely. thank you so Amen. much for being here tonight. All and right. thank you, Richard. Yeah, thank you, Richard. Us. Yay. Thank you. Here we go.
Funkadelic! <laughs> Tambourine is on fleet. Guitar. Yes, it Woo! is. And it's anger on the vocals and the tambourine. Thank you. Uh, please right? uh, thank you. Please come to our websites and sign up for our Stonehouse concerts. If you are in Ashland or in Oregon, you can come out and see us when this is all over. You must leave now. Take what you need. You think we last. to keep you better grab it fast you understands your orphan with his gun crying like a fire in the sun look out the saints are <laughs> the highway is for gamblers Better use your sense Take what you have gathered From the winds to dance The empty-handed painter From your seat Yora, I know you well. Yeah. 